video help for problem 13.10. Now this is important. They're different in the two editions. The second edition, the new edition, has really improved it, fixed it, because there really wasn't a correct result in the first edition. Either one you do, it would be fine, but I think it'll be really neat to see how this all works out and to, and to you will learn something from this. <laughs> what we're doing here is re on top of our, our usual windowing, remember windowing, we, we don't have case ba case values larger than a certain value, you know, time can go on to infinity, and we're taking sampling discreetly. Well, on top of that, remember we've got T2 star decay. That's effectively a filter. You know, T prime can be replaced by K. So this is a filter in K space. Now, we'll talk about that a little more, but this is different in the two editions, as I said. In the old edition, what was done was this thing was just simply taken, you know, the, the put, replace the T prime by K, include that in the Fourier transform. You get a complex number then because it's not symmetric in K. You may remember the, that if it's not symmetric in K, we'll get a complex Fourier transform back from chapter 11. So the old equation 13.59 was something complex, so we took the absolute value of it, and we could rewrite it like this. See my written notes. Well, now what we do in the old edition was to ask, when is this half of its maximum value? Its maximum value is at x equals 0, so it's just a simple bit of algebra. At x equals 0, you have some you know, some answer. And then you say, what x would give you half of that? So you just solve for x. And then, you know, you, you get twice that for your delta x, effectively your delta x for your T2 star filter. Now in 1357, we instead recognize that we actually have around the echo, you may remember the echo kind of looked like this in terms of the you know, the, uh, the T2 decay is, is still there, but the T2 prime, we recover it. And so it's actually symmetric around there. We put an absolute value of K in here, and that will be a more accurate uh, Fourier transform. So we take the Fourier transform of this with the absolute value of K. You don't have to do that. We do that in the text, and we get this answer. All you have to do is take this answer and prove the delta x, the, the resolution, is bigger than our good old, you know, windowing and sampling delta x. Remember what that is. That's just L over M. Oh, well, I have my own little way of doing it. You may have a better way of thinking about this. To prove that this is greater than 1, oh, I rearranged it. Then I took a logarithm, and I had to just show that this negative value was less negative than this, and this I just looked at a series for the logarithm of 1 minus alpha, because it always has all negative. Alpha is, by the way, positive. And you can just go through these little steps and prove that minus alpha is not as negative as minus alpha minus 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 minus. This, infinite, this law, Taylor series, has a bunch of negative terms in it. So that's my way of proving that that's greater than 1. And if that's greater than 1, then your answer is going to be greater than delta x. Well, in part b in the old edition, we got actually delta x less than the window and sampling MRI delta x. In part b, you just do the same calculation. You just have different delta x formulas. The old was this. T2 star is given Delta X is L over N, L is given, N is given, TS, you know how to calculate TS in terms of delta T. And the same thing, this is even easier. You can derive this, and you know this is going to be greater than 1. So you're not going to, this is going to be greater than delta X. Well, delta X was something like a millimeter, and this came out to be less than a millimeter. You'll, you'll find out, you know, I've given you some answers to choose from for this.